Hey gang, welcome. Thank you for joining me again today. Good to be back. It, in case you're wondering, yes, I am going through a little bit of a emotional uh, adjustment here. I, I'm really missing doing these daily art adventures as frequently as I used to. But it's good to be back today. So this, my name's Dan. <laughs> my name's been Dan for the last 1001 uh, broadcasts. Daily Ad and this is Daily Ad Adventure number 1002. Classic tricks and tips for finishing a watercolor. Yahoo. Let me get you up where you can see what I'm working on. All right, now I called this I call this classic tips and tricks because in on this particular painting, I'm not going to break any of the rules, quote unquote, break the rules. Hello, uncle. <laughs> you know, workaholic. Not so much these days, eh? Um, so every all the tricks. Well, it's possible I might break the rule and use gouache. So the, the main distinction between classic not breaking the rules, and yes, breaking the rules is the use of an opaque medium like gouache, okay? But for now, I'm going to try to avoid using it and just use, again, classic transpar transparent watercolor trick. So as you can see, my painting is mostly finished here. That is to say the painting part of it is mostly finished. Um, but I have several little things that I need to do just to make it a better painting. And those are the one, those are the things I want to walk, walk with you here. Um, let's start with the hardest one. And that is the lace on the bride's dress. So there's what the, there's what the lace looks like in the photograph. Can you see that? Yeah. And here's what it looks like at the moment on my painting. Let you see up close. I've already done some some of it here, and I'm going to continue. So, so everything that's here so far is basically just painted, you know, dark paint painting around white, trying to give the impression of lace. And I certainly could just stop at that point and say. You know that's realistic enough that would be that would be a very fair option um but i i i want to try to make it a little bit more realistic so again not not using at least yet not using any opaque medium like white gouache would that would be it would be so easy to indicate this lace using gouache but one of the things I want to do of course is just give you guys whoever's interested in a little a little watercolor lesson I just want to show you how this works so again this is, is this an exacto knife very sharp you know new blade by sharp I mean a new blade I don't I don't uh, try to stretch out the use of my exacto knife blades. I learned that years ago. In fact, I got in the habit years years ago of buying my blades in the 100 packs. Don't mess around with the silly little, you know, 10 pack or whatever it is. Just buy it because if I feel like it if you don't have very many blades in backup <laughs> like this box is, hasn't even been opened yet because I still have another 30 ba blades loose in my drawer. Not loose, but in the little blade compartment. Um, if you don't have a bunch of blades on hand, then you tend to be stingy. And you say, no, well, it's not brand new, but I, I could stretch it out a little bit more. Then you get in the habit of, of using a dull or not quite perfectly sharp X-Acto knife. And that causes all kinds of 
these problems. I learned that the hard way, way back in the day when I was doing quite a bit of airbrush illustration. It just didn't pay to, to try to be economic with your exact knife blades. With good grief, this whole box, how much did it cost me? I don't remember, $5? You know, pretty cheap as life goes. Now, I am working today on a 140 pound paper that is not the heavy stuff. A 300 pound, at least in America, 300 pound is the heavy stuff. And you can, you can abuse the heck out of the 300 pound stuff. It's really a lot of fun because it's just, it's so thick. It's just, it's just thick as cardboard, whatever cardboard is, you know. But it, um, this is not that. So I have to be a little bit careful. I don't have a whole, you know, 16th of an inch of paper to, to dig through before I start breaking up the other side. All right, so I've been scratching a few minutes. Let me let me show you what that looks like up close. Can you see that? I think you can. It might be out of focus. There we go. All right, so that's what it looks like at the moment. Now, my eye can see the, the, the shards, <laughs> the pieces of paper that I've scratched and picked up in the course of that and that's not a pleasant look so I'm going to do a couple things one is I have now another exacto knife blade that's at a different angle and I'm just using this mainly to scrape off the scrapings I don't know if that makes any sense and I'm not sure that it will be sufficient or adequate to get rid of and I do have other tricks up my sleeve, so just bear with me a minute here. I could do this, of course, with the, the first blade that I have. I... I have over here on my left, I've picked up a whole an assortment of various blades. Here's another one, just a inexpensive a pocket knife, but the curved blade is often very helpful. I always have a, a curved um, X-Acto knife blade nearby when I'm doing oil painting. For those rare times when I need to literally scratch paint off the canvas. You don't want to do that with a straight blade because you can gouge it easily. Okay, that's that's not too bad. More tricks up my sleeve. Here is a a white eraser. It looks a little bit dirty, and I certainly don't want to uh, get any of that dirtiness on my painting. So this is a piece of sandpaper. This is a tool, old-fashioned drafting. Back in the day when people used pencils to do architectural blueprint drawings and so on and so forth. Um, and you can still find these in, in most art stores in the pencil department. Just It's a stack of sandpaper and it's for getting a super sharp point on the graphite pencil. But right now I'm just using it to clean up my eraser. Okay, So I'm going to now go over the stuff I just scratched and see if it smooths it out a little bit. Um, no. <laughs> no, it, it's actually working okay. I just have now a few larger bits of turned up paper that I want to scrape off. Well, now that I've gone that far, let's try something different. Let's try painting. So here is my, I've mentioned this before, this is my portrait watercolor kit. The only, the only difference between this and my normal watercolor kit is that all of the, all of these colors are liftable. So they can be lifted out. They're not, there are no staining colors. 
And again, if you want, if you want a list of what what they are, um, you can see that on my um, on my YouTube community page. But you have to get off your iPad to see it for some reason. All right. So I am. Oh, and the other things about my portrait is that there are a much larger number of brown shades or earth tones or or uh, flesh tones, if you will. I'm pretty much in the habit of any time that I paint um, with watercolor. I have a brush in my right hand and a tissue, otherwise known as Kleenex, <laughs> in my left hand. I do a lot of that painting and the lifting. Yeah, now this is this is quite much. Now I, I would say uh, beginning to look like the lace on her dress. Now, as you can no doubt imagine, um, after having done all this scratching, of course, the, the, uh, the watercolor paint does not go down on the paper in the normal way because the paper is all extremely rough. So the, the paint really goes much more into the paper. And again, that's part of the reason why I, I knew enough, I predicted that well enough to uh, make sure I had a, a tissue right at hand so that I could see like that marks way too dark. I don't know if you could see that. Let me do another one. Too dark. Boom. Lift it up and it's just right. So this is good news. The fact that this little um, experiment, uh, trying to trying to achieve the the look of lace, and I'm probably not using the white, right word. I don't know what that's called, but um, it's working quite well, and that means that I can finish the painting. Um, I could finish this particular painting as a traditional, no cheating watercolor painting. And again, I, if you want to have watched me at all, you understand, I hope, what I mean by cheating. It's, again, my silly language, really, just to irritate the beginners. <laughs> I hope not. Not really. Um, cheating is essentially in watercolor is any use of opaque mediums. Um, although in my case, I would expand that to also the use of watercolor pencil is, is a, is a cheat. I don't think, I'm not sure, but I don't think you could get into, it, it have a painting accepted into the um, American Watercolor Society if you use opaque media or if you use watercolor pencil. So that's the standard I'm using and, and intentionally violating that standard here. All right, let's move on. Um, that's enough of the lace. I'm, I, I mean, I'll do more later, but I don't need to do any more demonstration for you right now. Let's talk about other issues. Um, here's one. The room's color, uh, the, the gray from his suit encroached into the white of his collar. The photograph doesn't really help me that much because actually in the photograph he has a bunch of these rose petals have landed on his shoulders and are is obscuring his collar, but I don't think that's an attractive look. So I am going to employ the good old, well, not really old, but <laughs> the wonderful trick of using uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser. So I'm 
masking it off, as you can see, with real masking tape. Now, it's important if you do this in a watercolor painting, it's important to make sure that everywhere where you're laying this tape down, that the painting is dry. You do not want the painting, the, the paper damp, because the, the uh, masking tape will tear up the paper. All right, so I, this is Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, mildly used. And I just dipped the corner, one end of it in water, so that it's damp. There, I'm done already. It didn't take long, did it? So it's a, it really is, it acts like an eraser. You get to peel this off very carefully. Save this, uh, these little bits of masking tape, because I may use them again in just a few minutes. Okay, now here, again, here's a tricky part. It's peeling this off without peeling up any of the paper. Go slow, peel it back at an extreme angle, and pray a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so far so good I know I'm sorry that the, the spot that I just whited out is so tiny that you guys probably can hardly even see it but um, I'm just going to say trust me the, uh, his white shirt collar now is perfectly looks to me like perfectly pristine white watercolor paper bare virgin it's not virgin but it looks like it so, there we go so that's nice um i started i did some work of course before i started broadcasting and uh one of the things i did is um scratched his forehead because somehow in the course of doing the painting we lost his brow and so i scratched with an exacto knife very carefully and now I've got this stainless steel spoon. And I'm just I'm just burnishing the paper and mashing it back down. Because now I want to paint. So I I, I got the his brow forehead shaped perhaps correctly, but it's not the right color. It's white, and I don't want it white. I want it flesh tone so it's a little bit dark boom that's just about right you do that again too dark just about right there we go so a little bit of his hair right in the same region since I'm looking at it really closely now Um, one, at the moment, one of the, one of the problems with the, the, this part of the painting is I have too many harsh outlines. For instance, do you see the, the top of her arm here? And believe it or not, that's part of what I'm doing here is I'm responding too carefully to the photograph. And the photograph, of course, is a flash straight on photograph that creates that makes the top of this arm a dark line it's, but it's and i i followed that too too carefully um so i have a couple different options let me let me pick on some um for lightening making the top of that arm lighter one is this is a plain old um pink eraser in the shape of a pencil and i stuck it in a pencil sharpener I got a little bit of a point here. So it's just, again, an eraser is classic watercolor technique. That's, that's nothing new or creative. I remember when I was a, in junior high school, about 12 years old, reading you know, my first book is on how to do watercolor and uh, reading that you could use erasers in watercolor that really impressed me as a 12 or 13 year old kid <laughs> really <laughs> you can use, use erasers i remember the again the first book i probably probably my parents bought it for me for christmas my first watercolor book 
and uh, it was good too it was i don't know where it is i remember it well enough to know it was not a it was probably a north light book um it was not it was not a kitty book um it was very it was very well done Anyway, I remember that the author that called, um, he called watercolor bag of tricks medium. And I've, I've remembered that all through the years and agree with him quite, quite much. Um, got the same problem right here. The, the edge of her sleeve, I, I overdrew, if you will, with it, with a dark, Oh, and that's coming up really nicely. So watercolor really is a bag of tricks. There's all kinds of things you can do. And that's really what I want to sh share with you today is some of those tricks. So, so far we've seen three. Uh, eraser, Mr. Clean, Magic Eraser, X-Acto Knife. And there will be more coming up. Now I also have... Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. There's water on this piece of paper. I don't want to get that on the painting. Um, I I didn't I wasn't paying close enough attention when I drew the edge of the bride's sleeve. I have it drawn as a straight line, when in fact it is uh, embroidery edge. I think that's the right word. You know, so the edge of her sleeve follows the floral leafy pattern in the fabric so it doesn't it's not a straight edge so as you can see as you can see you can probably even here can you <laughs> I might be getting a little bit of credit for it what's it called MSRP no oh, it's not it I'm forgetting what the <laughs> What the word is for that that phenomenon that some people get s s strange feelings from scratchy sounds i know it well i'm just forgetting it at the moment more scratching here as you can see the same lace uh, pattern oh that looks much better that looks that's fun uh, look, just a comment about the style of this watercolor painting. Uh, just, again, help you put it perhaps a little bit in perspective with my other artwork. Two things. Number one, it's a commission piece. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am being paid for this. Um, so, oh, hang on, another trick. So I've got a bunch of uh, sawdust, so to speak. I'm going to use tape to pick up the, the little clumps of paper that I've scratched up. Okay, there you go. Um, so it's a commission, and it's, as you can see, excessively small. I mean, right and there, by way of comparison. Her whole head is the size of the last digit on my uh, index finger. So it's very small. So... I feel like, and I'm sure, and of course, always, whenever you're doing a commission, you're always having to guess a little. That's why commissions are not as much fun, because <laughs> you're trying to guess to some, de some degree what it is that your client wants. And I'm guessing that this client doesn't want a real wild and crazy, what one could say, a mature or a sophisticated uh, forgive me for using those terms, but a mature or sophisticated Otzi <laughs> watercolor painting. My guess is the client would rather have a realistic watercolor painting. In other words, I'd rather, I'm assuming she would rather that I err on the side of tight, accurate, realistic rather than loose and dramatically watercolor, okay? So that is, 
Oh, that is a description of, I think, what you're seeing here. I actually have a magnifying glass here. Forgive me, you put my bald head right in your way for just a minute. I'm going back and revisiting the, uh, the top of her arm. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't there's any way for you to see this or not. No, I don't think there is. Can I let's see if I can do this? Oh yeah. There we go. So I'm scratching again. Not the, the top of her near arm to be lighter still. Maybe that's enough. Yeah, and now the, the sh shadow side of her near arm is just a little bit too liney again. But I think in this case, rather than making it lighter, hang on, I'll get you pointed in the right direction for a second. There we go. Rather than making lightening that shadow, I think I'm just going to darken her arm down to that point and see if that takes care of the problem. Yeah. Well, that's that's better. One more. I keep saying one more thing. I, sh I need to stop saying that. Um, I'm not crazy about the, the highlight that I have left, the hard edge that I've left on the top of her arm. So I'm just doing a pale flesh tone over her whole arm. Yeah, that looks better. And uh, once again, same thing on the groom's hand. It's a little bit too brown or dull. I want it to be a little bit brighter orange, a little bit more intense flesh tone, if you will. Same thing in forehead. So now, right now, I'm looking just, and this is not this. What I'm doing right now is traditional painting. It's not tips or tricks or anything. But I want, really want to get the the flesh tones nailed down. All right, I think I could leave those for a while. Let's let them dry and come back to that in a minute. Um, one of the elements in the photograph that I like, and I, I haven't tried to capture yet, are these uh, light sconces. I think they're actually chandeliers coming from the ceiling. But I think, I think it would make the painting more interesting if I had some of those lights in the background. So here's how I'm, here's how I'm going to try, try to tackle this. Cut off the end off this Mr. Pro Magic Eraser. Never tried this before, so we'll see. I want to get I want to get a point. Maybe that'll do. Let me let me try. Let's see. Where do I want to put these? Well, a couple up here behind the behind the groom. So I'm just lifting out fuzzy glowing spots. Out of the dark background. Wow. <laughs> it certainly, they certainly came out. The paint comes out easily enough. Hang on, don't, don't rush ahead yet. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, this is not all I'm going to do to these areas, as you can probably imagine. One of the things I want to do right now is just get them positioned in the right place. And I'm not, and again, I'm not trying to be literal to the photograph. I just want to give the impression of golden orbs of out-of-focus lights here in the background. <sighs> I 
All right, let's play with them a little more. Let's let's make the glow on some of them at least go out further, bigger glow. Oh, you guys are chatting up a storm and I'm ignoring you almost completely. Um, Uncle asked several minutes ago, what's a good spray sealer? Um, I, a workable fixative. Don't make the mistake I made many years ago of spraying a glossy fixative on your watercolor. I thought it would look cool. I remember a particular one watercolor painting I did, and it just didn't. <laughs> watercolor paintings are not supposed to be shiny. So don't make that mistake. Uh, so beyond that, uh, just a, a flat, matte, workable fixative would probably be sufficient. What I'm doing right now really corresponds to the to the fuzz layer in my oil paintings, doesn't it? All right, getting there. Now, my question, next question is how am I going to get uh, a little, a little more focused light, oops, sorry, out of that area. Well, the first thing I'm gonna try, I, I began talking about this the other day, but I, never really finished. Why do I use a hog hair bristle brush for lifting out? And the answer is because it, it, it has stiffness to it. Therefore, the brush itself acts like a little, like a brush. You can, you can scrub. It has a scrubbing action, which helps when you're trying to, uh, hang on just a second. I, one of my one of my jugs of water is straight up in front of you here. So every time I reach it, I'm putting my sleeve right across your field of vision. So let's fix that. All right. So that's why I have, and it's a short filbert, not a long filbert, again, because it, it's good for brushing. And the brushing action, of course, is part of the, part of what, it, part of what lifts the paint out of, the pay off the paper out of the painting okay so that right there is classic watercolor lifting i'm going to do a couple things before i'm finished with these orbs of light in the background first of all they're not the right color so i'm going to do a warm yellow orange wash over the whole area up here so that the lights will appear warm then after that i will probably come back and lift one more time this time lift the the yellow orange out of the out of the very center of the glow right when you when you lift watercolor paint off the off a of painting off watercolor paper of course the texture as you can see well see here the texture that's left behind is it has a smudgy feel. It doesn't. It doesn't have the same feel as uh, virgin watercolor paper, right? So, and that's okay. You can just leave it that way if you want, and it does, it's okay here. But if you're ever in a moment, a place where you don't want that that scrubbed look. And one of the things you can do sometimes helps a little bit is to um, do what I'm going to do right now, which helps a little bit, which is reapply uh, watercolor wash on top of the area you've lifted. And that doesn't quite make it go all the way back to you know virgin watercolor paper, but it, it goes back a little bit, gives it a little bit more of a normal watercolor look. 
right, so there I just did the warm yellow washes. I have to wait for that to dry, maybe. Hmm. Let me think. Okay, and these pink things, I think you figured, probably figured it out, uh, are suggesting um, rose petals falling. All, all the guests at the wedding threw uh, rose petals at the bride and groom. I'm not sure throwing at is quite the right term, but <laughs> you probably know what I mean. Here's a slightly smaller bristle brush. Let's see if I can. I didn't wait for this to dry because she didn't notice. I think this will work. If I decide that I want even a slightly, even smaller and brighter uh, epicenter on each of these glowing orbs, um, I will wait until those that dries and I will uh, come in with a, an X-Acto knife again and scratch out whatever needs to be scratched. All right, I'm kind of putting off because of indecision. Putting off what to do about the groom's suit. You, you can see that I've, I've worked on it, not excessively, but several different layers. And it's in, I've ended up with, it looks like a wool suit, and it, it's definitely not supposed to be. It has a, has a satiny finish, and here it looks bumpy. I am honestly thinking about, after all this time and talk, about doing this whole painting in a traditional medium. I'm actually thinking about cheating ever so slightly. Now, this is an experiment. So let, let's see. I'm thinking about, I've already, I just put some, no, well, let me move you over here so you can see what I'm doing. I just put a tiny bit of white gouache in this well right here. And it already had uh, gray in it, bluish, brownish, gray. That just means it was a mixture of gray. It wasn't it was just black and white. So what I'm thinking here, I'm going to have my tissue right at hand. No, it needs to be more white, and then I can tell already. Hang on. So same operation. I'm just adding a tiny bit of straight out of the tube gouache to this gray mixture. What I'm thinking I might try to get away with is... is um, it's a test. Hmm. Well, let me try it over here. What I'm trying to get away with is using just a tiny bit of gouache to make this gray ever so slightly translucent, or I could say ever so slightly opaque. And I'm only going to do this if I feel like I can get away with it <laughs> if I feel like I can be not caught if it looks to me when after this dries if it looks like I used gouache then I'm gonna rub all this off or lift it out but at the moment I feel, as you can see I feel pretty 
confident that I can get away with this little bit of deception. <laughs> oh, I've got a I've got a drawing problem here. That's crazy. Look at how his his suit, the edge of his suit hangs down. That's, that's what happens when you've worn a suit much much too long. It loses its shape and it becomes saggy and bad baggy right along the edge <laughs> so we we definitely cannot have that and the man's suit the man's wedding he can't be wearing that old suit so let's straighten that out that's easy enough <laughs> glad i caught that that would be that would be one of those embarrassing mistakes if i were to let that go now i have a uh, dark traditional dark uh Transparent watercolored paint on my brush. And just doing a few details, cre uh, seams, and so forth. Some shadows. Well, I'll tell you already, I, th I think my deception is safe. I think I can get away with little bit of opacity but I feel I feel good enough about it that I'm actually going to push it a little bit further so I am for the third time adding even more white wash to this gray now when I'm finished this painting here I hope I remember I'm going to wash out this little well right here quite thoroughly because I certainly do not want pick up this tray at some future painting and you know not realize that there's that there's opaque medium in that tray that would be that would be quite unpleasant in my opinion so I'll wash that out real carefully now you might be watching me do the classic you know if a little is good a lot is better mistake I don't know now this looks like this might dry too light and be telltale opaque medium again I'm trying to I'm be trying to be deceptive here I don't want anybody to notice that I used any opaque medium at all in this case by you by keeping it so thin that people won't be able to tell. Now, let me, I'll go ahead and tell you why am I being so bold if I'm so unsure. First of all, I'm not liking the way that looks so much. Um, I'll tell you why. Because I have another trick up my sleeve that I use quite regularly in watercolor. And that is any time that I do use, almost any time that I do use opaque wash, in a watercolor, um, I follow up that opaque gouache by painting transparent traditional watercolor on top of the opaque. And that almost always, or very often, makes makes it virtually impossible. Or, nah, that's too strongly. Makes it almost impossible to detect the presence of opaque. Again, I wouldn't try to I think get into the into a watercolor society. By the way, I'm never going to enter watercolor society, America. So I don't want you to know all of the, all of my talk and such. At least I don't think I have no. I want to get into the upper echelons of oil painting competitions, but not watercolor. I was essentially a watercolor major in college. Even though they didn't, they didn't call it that. I was just a fine arts major, but uh, my whole senior show, my whole senior year, was all watercolor. And then, as a freelance illustrator, uh, yeah, see, that is not very pleasant. I'm kind of back. I like the color that it is, but I'm still ending up with a speckled texture. Looks like an old a natty war, wool suit. A 
which I don't like, of course. So now I'm just now I'm just blending with water, just trying to push back the, the texture a little bit. That is so funny. When it dries, it's still coming up. Natty. Hmm. I may not be able to resolve this one on camera, in which case I'll finish when I bid you all adieu. But let's hang in there a little bit longer to see if I can rescue it. I like the color of that now. Now what's happening right now is my this part of the paper is getting so wet it's not allowing me to do much at all. Let me give that a break for a minute. His suit, let's let that dry. And I'm gonna go back up here in the in the ceiling. Ah, they're almost dry. Which is dangerous, by the way. And I'm lifting out the little tiny bits. Hmm. Again, once again, after all my talk about <laughs> not using, how about legit, I'm thinking about, again, about uh, cheating one more time. It, this time in an area that I hadn't foreseen. I'm just using, um, I think this cardboard box is a, <laughs> as a palette, as a mixing palette. Um, I'm going to mix up some opaque, or almost opaque, uh, dull pink. Just, I now feel like my petals, my rose petals, they're falling from the sky are a little too uniform and I feel like I want want there to be more of them not quite speckly enough so now I am just plain old flat cheating again after all my talk about you know making this a legit so to speak I have just broken that But as I have said before, would say now, the likelihood that my client will have any idea is virtually nil. And the, the idea that she would care <laughs> is even niller than that. <laughs> so my goal is to create a, a good painting, if that means also, uh, just for what it's worth, this kind of detail, little sharp bits of light, um, is, is a is a perfect way to use an opaque medium because it's almost undetectable. Even experienced watercolor painter would have to look two or three times. And go, wait, did he, did he or didn't he? <laughs> All right, while we wait for that to dry, let me look at your... My goodness, Uncle Sixty sent me $50 for my tip jar. Thank you, my friend, that's too much. And thank you, yes, Uncle, thanks for... Please do hit the like button, I appreciate that. ASMR, thank you, HB, that is what it's called. Hello, Redina. <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone took a bite out of my photo. <laughs> now, what happened is, is it, uh, this got a bit of water on it, and I didn't want, didn't want the water to hit my painting, so I ripped it out. 
Hello, Sharon London. Um, while we're waiting then for, for his suit to dry, maybe a few other things. This is always an exciting part of the process. It's like opening gifts at Christmas, taking the mask off. And I hope I don't regret this. I, I feel like it's safe because I don't think I'm going to do any more painting out in the, uh, around the edges of the painting. If I do anything at all, it'll just be in the interior somewhere. And as you can imagine, this, this intense blue really does, I find it distracting. It really does uh, create a difficult um, backdrop. It makes it difficult to, to evaluate color and tone. So I'm happy to take it off. Just a word for what it's worth. Um, my client ordered an 8 by 10 inch painting. Uh, there are two ways to accomplish that in watercolor. One is to make a piece of paper 8 by 10 inches and paint all the way to the edges, the way my friend David Stickle does on a full sheet of watercolor. Paints all the way to the edge. That's perfectly legit. But as you can see, my preferred method is to uh, make the painting itself 8 by 10 inches and then leave a border. I don't always mask. Sometimes I, I do a, a hand drawn or a, loop, a loose uh, edge border around my paintings. But on this one, I felt like it was most appropriate to, uh, to mask it, make it clean, clean, hard edge. Now, when they take this to a frame shop, which I'm assuming they will, the frame shop will have a decision to make. And I'm, I'm hoping that they'll consult with my client, the bride here, and say, do you want us to, you know, leave some of this edge showing? It will do a mat, you know, up, say, to within a quarter of an inch. Or do you want us to come right up? Then that's... That's their decision. Whatever she, whichever way she wants to go is fine with me. I would think if it's a, if the framing person has considerable skill, you know, I would, I would trust uh, their input, the framer's input, quite a bit too, as to what would look best. Bear with me just a minute. I'm going to speed this up. Give this a little shot of. Uh, hair dryer for a minute, so forgive me for the noise. Here we go. that'll do. There is one part of this painting that I hope my client will like. It's a little bit artsy, but the uh, the tops, the very tops of both of their heads um, have a lost edge. You can't really quite tell where his head ends and the background starts and the same thing with her right here. Now I did, before I started the broadcast, I, I did take a knife and scratch out a little bit of highlight on the front of her hair because I felt like that was important. Well, what about the front of his beard? Yeah, I might do the same. No, no, change my mind. Let's not do that. Okay, he has a ring. Let's put a little sparkle on his wedding ring right here. Cleaning up his uh, sleeve, a little bit of flesh tone got into his white shirt. Not a nice look, so cleaning that up there. Same thing here with this. Almost looks like he has a dirty fingernail. Not a good thing for a groom to have dirty fingernails. So. And um, I do want to come up here and add just a little tiny epicenter of sparkle in the middle of these lights up here. 
Perhaps you've heard me say in the past, Uncle, I want to reiterate and say thank you, my friend. I appreciate that very much. That $50 contribution, you're too much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Very kind. Uh, I say often in my broadcast that uh, the human eye is inexorably drawn to punctiliar light. And this is classic punctiliar light. Points of light, that means. The reason I don't usually just call it points of light, I say this every time, is because if I had said points of light, the, 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 my audience, you would think of things like this, like points of light. When in fact, most of the time, punctiliar light is like little bits of sunlight coming between the leaves. Or, uh, you know, the last half dozen yellow orange leaves hanging on to a, a, a tree in the fall against a dark background or back, dark trunk. That's punctiliar light, the light, the leaves. Pointish light instead of points of light, pointish light. So that's why I say punctiliar. Light that is pointish. But here in this painting, it's literal points of light, light bulbs. And uh, it's just having a little bit of tiny white speck in the middle of each of those glowing orbs. I'm quite happy with that. Um, while I'm still broadcasting, I can go back down here to the bottom of her dress. Bear with me just a second. There we go. And uh, do a little bit more lace. Again, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at the reality of her dress. It doesn't, the lace doesn't show up down here. There's a bunch there and a bunch there. So I want to perhaps indicate that. I am happy to say that I'm quite happy with the, my scratchy lace up here. That is a good look. So big sigh of relief for me. Um, the only serious problem issue, I'll give that suit a few more minutes to dry. Uh, the only thing I'm not completely happy with at the moment is his gray suit. And once again, I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. I'll show you one of those in a minute. While I am using an X-Acto knife and talking about an X-Acto knife, um, I can't do it on this painting, but if I were using 300 pound paper, if I was using the nice, heavy, heavy watercolor paper, um, I would have the option, I've done this many times over the years. Again, brand new, brand new X-Acto knife has to be absolutely surgical sharp. Um, if you want a really sharp, crisp line in a watercolor, you can actually cut a literal V groove. And I, I would do this with a magnifying glass um, or a jeweler's glass, which I also have. These are, those are, these are tools left over essentially from my days of doing airbrush, where at times almost microscopic precision was called for. Um, but you can literally, in the heavy paper, cut a line this way and then with a magnifying glass and then come back and cut the other way and lift out a little V of the paper. I mean, theoretically, I'm sure you could do it on this paper, but it would be insanely fussy and, and not terribly satisfactory. Um, speaking of which, yeah, let's go up here to her uh, veil. There's, there's a good opportunity for a line. So let me show you how I do it. On this kind of paper, I would just scratch a line like that. I'm gonna do another one. ASMR. That's exactly the word. <laughs> the word <laughs> I was looking for. The rest of you, I'm just driving you crazy <laughs> with the scratching sound. <laughs> Her hair 
goes all the way past the small of her back. It's all the way back to her derriere. That's amazing. That is some long hair. Beautiful long hair. I don't know what saying. Again, um, oh, I forgot. There's another tip I could have showed you. Watercolor trick uh, that I'm not using in this, and that is sandpaper. Plain, old-fashioned sandpaper. Um, I think I found that the reddish garnet or traditional sandpaper works better than emery paper for some reason. Um, and uh, that also, that's a old traditional watercolor trick. And of course, it also leaves the paper, as you imagine, decidedly roughed up. So then that might lead to a good opportunity for burnishing the paper with a stainless steel spoon. Uh, the, the stainless steel spoon trick, it, surprisingly effective you do not have to press down very hard you don't, don't have to you do not have to put elbow grease into it 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 works quite well with fairly minimal elbow grease as I said I think I'll do a little edge down here don't want to do too much of that, of course. Just a little bit here and there, I guess, yeah. Back to this, I'll, I think I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Let's come back to this, uh, the suit problem. Again, not terribly crazy about the tech. It, the color is quite good. It's a pretty good match, actually. But I'm not crazy about the texture. Let's try a couple different things. Here's one. This is a, I don't know if any of you guys remember, back in the olden days, <laughs> when people actually used pencils and pens and things like that. Let me put my glove back on. Just to, put, to keep oils out of the paper. Um, this is an ink eraser. And if you remember that at all, you probably remember too that they, they never did work really very well. <laughs> but I've got it in my old drawing kit because, um, because it, it's just a has a little more grit to it. So right now I'm using that just basically as an abrasive, as an abrasive tool, like very low, low, low grade sandpaper, or high grade, depending on how you like to say that. Oh, let's do this. He's got four buttons down here. Let's put a little sparkle on his four buttons. I'll get credit for, for that right there. Okay, so is it working? Mm. Uh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, having mentioned sandpaper, if you guys will just stay there for just a minute. My large watercolor kit is right outside in my, sorry, in my closet door out here. And I think I could put my hands on a piece of, yep, there it is. Good. So I am going to show you the watercolor trick. I'm certainly not exhausting all the watercolor tricks for you, but I'm giving you a fair sampling, I would say. And this is say what grit so 
I am going to do this though. I'm going to tear off just a little strip of this. Okay, start. It's easy. I don't remember what the first couple layers were on his suit here. But whatever it was, uh, the the paper here got kicked up into a pretty rough surface, and that's that's what's coming back. And this is not really helping. Um. Watercolor is a bag of tricks. So <laughs> you just keep messing around. Now, I mean, this is not, what I, what you see me doing here is far from ideal. Again, and I, I was pretty happy with the the process, the progress of the whole painting, everything except this suit. But now I'm thinking, okay, maybe if I just re-wet it, it'll all calm back down. And I'm make, I'm picking up, of course, all those previous layers, including the. A slightly opaque the word there would be translucent right what is slightly opaque translucent right but the slightly opaque gouache I'm just smoothing it all out maybe that'll take care of it that's <laughs> hope springs eternal you know <laughs> oh I'm sure this will do it this will do it this will do it Well, that does look pretty good. If it would dry like that, I'd be satisfied. And I'm too impatient, so more hair dryer, hang on. It is considerably better. I could get away with that. While I was doing that, though, I realized, you know what? I think the back of his head is too... I think I cheated the back of his head slightly. Let me just... So I'm lifting out now with the bristle brush. That feels better. Music, Christmas music playing in the background. That's kind of nice. Nice to have the, the season upon us. All right. I think I've beat the death out of that painting <laughs> and this broadcast. This might be a good place to stop right here. Xanthan gum. Good. Thank you, Uncle. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. HB. Ooh. Uh, HB suggests ironing the back of the paper without steam. Correct. <laughs> Got that? That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Thanks for thanks for passing that on. What fun. Love it when you guys give me good tips, especially any that I missed. To, to in effect, burnish the paper, doing what I'm doing with a spoon. Also, to level it out. I've done that, trying to flatten out paper. Um, I now have a question for myself. I'm going to want to sign this. Do I sign it inside the painting or outside? I 
I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go traditional on this one. I'm gonna paint inside the uh, sign, inside the painting. D. <laughs> I do know how to spell my name. I promise, Dan. A L S O N Y. Yeah, good. That was the right decision. All right, friends. Thank you again for joining me. I hope I'll be back soon. I do have a couple commissions. Two, three, maybe. Three. Oh yeah, three. And I hope to do my uh, my annual Santa painting in the next week. Um, I I was at a party. Um, two nights ago, Sunday night, and with good old friends, and there was a man there. It was a company party, a business, and one of the people I do illustrations for, and so I was invited to the company party. It was great fun, and one of the men there uh, works as a Santa. <laughs> <laughs> just because he looks absolutely, uh, his beard is real. He got a white beard down about here. And he's a beautiful Santa, and uh, his wife had taken pictures of him. I said, "Oh, oh, oh send me, send me pictures of him." <laughs> so that's that's the hardest part of doing a Santa painting is finding a good photograph. So that would be fun. I've done a Santa, Santa painting. I think each of the last three years, just a fun little silly tradition, and. Uh, all of those have also been on aluminum, aluminum. So we'll see if I feel so inspired. I'll do another aluminum painting on aluminum Santa. And then I've got a couple commissions. So I really do have artwork to do. So I, I hope to do it and hope to talk to you guys when I do it. Thanks for joining me. Been fun. Appreciate it. Thank you, Inigo. Appreciate it. I'll look at this for a couple days before I send it off. You know, look at it with fresh eyes tomorrow. Sometimes you go, oh, I love it. Sometimes you go, eh, not so sure, right? And then so I make little changes. I re reserved, I like it when I have time to do that, when I have the luxury of uh, looking at it a second or third day. So that's it. Thank you again for your time and your company. I appreciate it very much.